Exo Torlight versus Lucid Dreams. Ooh. Oh, interesting. What's up? You're watching Hive Mind, the snobbiest show on the internet. My name is Riley Zoltz, with my bratty co-host, Graydon. I don't want it anymore. <laughs> and welcome to the first episode of 1v1 Song Battles. Brand new segment, here's how it's gonna work. We asked our Patreon members on Discord to send DJ Grant 1v1 song matchups. This song versus that song by two different artists. DJ Grant took the best matchups and put them on a survey. You guys then voted on that survey for one song or the other. DJ Grant's gonna play us a clip of both songs we're gonna then say which one we like better, and then try to guess which one you guys voted was the better song. One point for each one we get right. Me versus Graydon versus you. Alfonso in Guadalajara, Mexico. <laughs> Guadalajara. That really rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? It buddy? sure does. I love yeah. it. Try it. Guadalajara. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Before we get into it, make sure you like the video, subscribe if you want to see more. HiMyTV.com for our merch. We also have a new drop with Copes. It's on the screen. It's linked in description. Go pick something up. It's great Christmas present stuff. And our Patreon and our Cameo are linked in the description as well. Last thing, we did open memberships on our channel. There's a join button down there. If you join and become a member today, you'll get a bunch of exclusive emotes. You'll get to participate in members only polls, members only chats, and get exclusive video content. Bang. Thank you to everybody who's joined so far and thanks to everybody who's joining right now. It really helps us out. Ah! DJ Grant, what's the first song matchup? Sicko Mode versus Mo Bamba. Clash of the Titans right here. Sicko Mode by Travis Scott featuring Drake. Correct. And Mo Bamba by Sheck Wes. Mm -hmm. These are kind of the white boy turn up anthems. Absolutely. This is before you see the show, they play it, and a mosh pit will start and there's not even an artist on stage. They play these two songs if they're worried about the event being shut down by police. And if they're not worried about that, they play Take a Step Back. Mm -hmm. There's levels to it. Absolutely. You know what I mean? In the 305, bitches treat me like I'm Uncle Lou. Don't stop. Slot the top off. It's just a rope. It's really good. It's really good. And that's just one little piece of it. That's like a pizza pie with a bunch of different toppings on every slice. <laughs> In the 305, bitches treat me like I'm Uncle Luke. It's also just unbelievable that that came from a place of like an artist who is not yet successful made that song. Yeah. Like that's raw to be it able to wild. make a song that does that to people. And about a basketball player who was never successful. So what's your opinion? Which song is better to you? Oh, just personally? Yes. It's gotta be sicko mode. I think it's a more dynamic song, but I think if I hear the beginning of Mo Bamba, I get a little bit more of like the jolt. That's fair. To just go crazy. Yeah, it's more of a hype song, but like which one am I gonna listen to more for the rest of my life? It's, yeah. it's tenfold sicko mode. That's probably true for me as well. So I guess I'll go sicko mode based on that stat, but I think like viscerally, yeah. deep down in my core as a human being, <laughs> if I hear Mo Bamba, <laughs> oh, I'm something ready. happens to me. Yeah. Like the adrenaline rushes to my brain. Three, two, one. Sicko mode. I put Mo Bamba. It is sicko mode. That makes sense. Yeah. It's a better song. What's the split here? Uh, sicko mode got 77.1% of votes. And yeah. And Mo Bamba got 22.99%. Yeah. Those are amazing statistics you've got there, Grant. <laughs> <laughs> And if you add those two numbers together, that's how many yards are in a football field. Not a Canadian one. How many yards are in their football field? 110. Really? Yep. Little extra football. Yeah, it's <laughs> weird. And it's a little wider too. I'm gonna start watching the CFL. It is kind of fun. Uh -huh. There's some freaky deaky rules in there. You can punt it on a kickoff return. You can punt it back to the other team. <laughs> <laughs> really? I swear to God. That's interesting. Just kind of like being polite. <laughs> no, there's some uh, sort of strategy to like, it. Like, oh no, I don't need it. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a final play to a CFL game and each team punted it back to each other three or four times. I said, what the fuck is going on here? It's like <laughs> recess rules. <Yeah. laughs> Grant, what's the next song matchup? Exo Tour Life versus Lucid Dreams. Ooh. Oh, interesting. Okay, so Exo Tour Life by Lil Uzi Vert. Yep. Newly Diamond. And Lucid Dreams by Juice World, which I believe has been Diamond. For sure. Uzi, they also have a diamond in their forehead or did for a week. <laughs> I don't really know what's, how do they go through so many phases so quickly? <laughs> Being able to afford expensive healthcare has its luxuries. I don't I really care if you cry. I'm a really sure I never lie. I still remember the day that you showed me that song. I did? Yeah, you showed it to me. Really? In Cincinnati, Ohio. And you said, I know that you don't like Uzi, but I think you'll like this new song. Was I right? Yeah. Oh, Riley. You're always right. Riley. Except in the games, almost every single question. You're being such a sweet sweetie today. What's gotten into you? Sugar lips. I still see your shadows in my room. 
Can't take back the love that I gave you. You know, I thought when I heard the clip of EXO Tour Life, I was like, I like this song way more. But when I just heard Lucid Dreams, I think I might like Lucid Dreams more than EXO Tour Life. I did the opposite. Oh, really? Yeah, I went into this thinking like, ah, I think I like Lucid Dreams more, but it's unfortunate, but like the guitar and the beat effect of Lucid Dreams has really diluted that sound to me. I mean, yeah, it's a direct sample of Sting. Although I don't like Sting that much, right. I feel like it works in that context. I just feel like I've started to hear Lucid Dreams a little bit less. It's true. And that has made me more fond of it when I do hear it nowadays. EXO Tour Life, although it was a huge song and is a huge song to this day, I don't feel like you hear it in many common places the same way that you hear Lucid Dreams. That's true. But EXO Tour Life's a more stylish song. For sure. Even though it's like whinier, it's weird. That's a weird dynamic. The EXO Tour Life has some magic in it. There's yeah. something there. And Lucid Dreams, I feel like, really feels like a bona fide, obvious hit. This is a great battle right here. It's like USC versus UCLA. Army versus Navy. Alien versus Predator. Love that movie, man. Is it good? Yeah. Uh, what's this voice? Ridley Scott. What a magnificent director. I worked with him on the set of Eight Crazy Nights, the animated Adam Sandler Hanukkah movie. You worked with Ridley Scott on the set of Eight Crazy Nights? Yep. We were building an old school car. Oh, so nothing to do with the movie? Nope. Oh, you were just there while they were... What, what, is, what is the set of an animated movie? Ridley Scott's Garage. I still don't get what the set was. Like, were they filming something? Adam Sandler was in a green suit with those little balls on him. He acted the whole thing out. Really? Yeah, I every single character. I've never seen Eight Crazy Nights. Are you serious? But I've lived Eight Crazy Nights. <laughs> yeah, you're like 42, I hope so. Three, two, one. Exo Tour Life. That's what I put. It is Exo Tour Life. Yeah, we yeah. know our fans. We yeah. know they would like that song more than they would like Lucid Dreams by Juice World. We do know that. What were the statistics on that? Exo Tour Life had 64.41% and Lucid Dreams had 35.59%. A little bit of a closer battle. I did expect it to be slightly closer. Closer. Yeah, for sure. All right, Grant, what's the next matchup? Western Union versus Bohemian Rhapsody. Two Blade songs, right? <laughs> Western Union by Drain Gang. Yeah. And Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen. Yes. One is much longer. Someone played Bohemian Rhapsody at the bar last night, and I was like, this shouldn't be a lot. That, American Pie, it's gotta be off limits. I know a bar that cuts the song off at four minutes. Right. Like it's programmed in there. I think that's genius. So you right. can't get like a bunch of deadhead freaks in there just vibing out on acid, listening to 45 minute tracks. How many points is it on Touch Tunes to play Fish live at Madison Square Garden? <laughs> <laughs> it's a four and a half hour set. One of their shorter ones, honestly. Most of it's noodling. It sounded like they were tuning for most of it, but I took 13 tabs the first time I watched it. And I would really like to revisit that place. Mm -hmm. And I'm out of, I'm out of sheets right now. <laughs> Click, 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 reload, reload, reload. 20,000 THP, make a call to Nino. Great song, one of my favorite Dragon Gang songs. See, this matchup might feel like a meme to you guys, but it really is two great songs facing off. Low key, yeah. They're different. Sure. sure. Your parents might like one way more than the other. Sure. What's he say? Didn't mean to make you cry If I'm, I'm not near this time tomorrow Carry on, carry on For nothing, nothing really matters, matters. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. I, I got carried away. I was doing like a Wayne's World thing. Your palms feel like the bottom of a snail. Thank you. Queen has better songs, I will say that. Fat Bottomed Girls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or um, I Want to Ride My Bicycle, whatever that one is. I want to ride my bicycle. I want. It sounds like a warm up at like a musical. It is. Well, You're like, all right, everybody's warming up your voices. Okay. I want to ride my bicycle. I want to ride my bike. He literally does Figaro, Figaro in this song. A vocal exhibition. I hate to say this because I sound like such a loser. I really do like Western Union more than Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah, I probably do too. Really? Yeah. I mean, Bohemian Rhapsody is like fine, but yeah. Western Union's like cool. You know what I mean? If I'm getting in a car and like my friends come in, but they got some friends I've never met before and they're like, oh, can they catch a ride? I'm like, sure, hop in my sick Porsche. Yeah. They all get in there like, wow, this is a nice car. And I turn on Bohemian Rhapsody. I'm not cool guy anymore. Right. If I pop on Western Union and I eat 15 Kratom pills and I floor that fucker, I mean, fuck, man. People are going to be like, 
this guy's fucking sick, man. And I'll be like, what'd you say back there? And they'll be like, oh, nothing. <laughs> That's how I live my life, man. Fast lane. <laughs> Listening to Drain Gang. Woo! Three, two, one. Western Union. That's what I put. It's Bohemian Rhapsody. Really? Yeah. Wow. What's the score here? What's the stats? Bohemian <laughs> Rhapsody. <laughs> got 54.72% of the votes, and Western Union got 45.28% of the votes. Wow, we are overestimating the amount of drainers in yeah. our world, and also, which is the funnier answer? Yeah. I think that's really what it is, is like, it's like the reverse funny. Right. Like, Western Union is the funnier answer if somebody asks you which is a better song, but to them, as part of this game, Bohemian Rhapsody is a funnier answer. Yeah. That's kind of awesome. There's a lot of layers to all of this. Yeah. What's the next matchup, Grant? Off the Map by Sofago and Mr. Rage by Trippy Red and Cardi. Oh, here we go. Oh, this is a good one. This is a good matchup. Because this is kind of like one song copying another, a lot mm -hmm. of people thought. Trippy Red and Cardi had to team up to try to take down the almighty Sofago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want my niggas shoot, they take you up the map. Don't know my niggas, but they came in with that scrap. That synth sound is like unmatched. It reminds me of like running really fast on carpet or something. Oh, like static? Yeah, like you're in socks and you're running really fast on carpet, but you're not picking up your feet. Kind of like. <laughs> oh, I just thought like of a crazy fantasy world. Sure. Where it's literally like as far as the eye can see all carpet and you're in socks and you just run as fast as you want, but not like the static part, not the keeping your feet on the ground, mm -hmm. like fully just running. Sounds awesome. <laughs> like that might be what heaven's like. Like they get there and they're like, no, no, no. No, 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 shoes off, shoes off. Yeah. And you're like, why? And you take it off and it's just lush carpet for like a past year's length. And God's just like, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, race me. <laughs> I can't see a damn thing, fake walk. Can't see a damn thing, fake. I'll tell you which one I like more. Which one? That one. I like Off the Map way more. I like Miss the Rage a lot, though. It grew on me as time went on. When it first came out, I was like, nope, cheap plastic version of the Rage thing. Yeah. They're trying to capitalize on the Sofago thing, blah, 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 blah. As time went on, I grew to really love that song. But one, I prefer Mario Judah's version. Oh, I miss the Rage. Like that just added so much to <laughs> yeah. that song. And then secondly, I prefer Sofago's version. Fair enough. Three, two, one. I put Miss the Rage. Rage. That's what I put. It is Mr. Rage. Okay. I was really hoping our fan base would vote for Off the Map, but I understand. I get it. And I forgive you. It's also just like a way bigger song. Mr. the Rage. Like, I feel like there's some people who probably didn't even know what Off the Map was. For sure. What was the split here, Grant? Mr. Rage had 89.06% of the votes, and Off the Map had 10.94% of the votes. Tanner! A little 10 bag for Off the Map. I really thought it could go either way there, but Wrong. obviously not. Lopsided victory by Mr. the Rage. Great. Yeah. What's the next song matchup? <laughs> Call Me Maybe versus Toxic by Britney Spears. Fuck, fuck, Whoa. Fuck, fuck, fuck. I knew this one was coming. <laughs> yeah, this is pretty obvious for our channel. Fuck, 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 fuck. These are two of the best written and best produced pop songs of all time, in my opinion. Yeah, I totally agree. Call Me Maybe came out and people thought it was a joke. And then people were like, wait a minute, but listen to those strings. Yeah, it's a, that song's undeniably good. Call Me Maybe is a perfect pop song. Toxic is like yeah. top five pop song of all time. Yeah, I love that song. Maybe. I'm not going to go that far, but one of the best music videos of all time, too. Some people say it was a sexual awakening for me. And though some people are myself. <laughs> Waiting for the school bus, saw that video on MTV, blew my gasket. Not like that, but like yeah. wires were retwined and synapses were opened up and I grew hair in my chest that day. Some are saying that I experienced a similar sexual awakening to my co-host Graydon and that those people are me. Good morning and I'm horny. That's a sexual awakening. Yeah, uh, shout out Jaleel. Jaleel. Yeah. <laughs> this is crazy, but here's my so fun. It's like a feeling of childlike wonder. It's a bit whimsical, even. It feels like it plays into the idea that could it all be this simple? <laughs> <laughs> God, that song is good. I much prefer that one. I think I'll take Toxic over Call Me Maybe, but it is close for me. Yeah, they're both really good, but Call Me Maybe is just like genuinely like cheeky. Yeah, it is. Toxic is just like, whoa. Three, two, one. Call Me Maybe. That's what I put. It is Toxic. Oh, good. We're out of touch. I know, I'm glad though. Yeah. I was on the fence about this one. I just thought because Call Me Maybe was newer. That was my thought process too. It was Toxic was just an older song and more people were gonna be able to reference their experience listening to Call Me Maybe. But I feel like this one might be a huge blowout. What was the... Toxic had 50.7% and Call Me Maybe had 49.3%. 
Wow, our closest. That's as close as you can get. Right? How's that for a nail biter? Not really. It could get a little closer. I know it was just like a, a phrase you said. Yeah, I, yeah. I wasn't. Yeah. I wasn't trying to be like a mathematician about it. I was just, you know. Yeah. Kinda, I mean, you know, talking like a sports announcer or something. You don't have to be a mathematician to know that it could be closer <laughs> than that. Listen, I'm not yeah. trying to read too far into it. Mm -hmm. I was just using kind of a turn of phrase, yeah. like some color commentator might say, just like right. You know, but this like, is a, this it is doesn't true. get closer than that, folks. Yeah, but this isn't. Sports. Sports. These are these are numbers and our fans that we're talking about, and I think they would appreciate a little okay. sincerity from you instead of this okay. flowery language. Sure. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I mean, I can try. Go ahead. All right. Yeah. That sure was close, but it obviously <laughs> could be closer because it wasn't a direct fifty and then a bunch of repeating decimals. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Grant, what's that next song matchup? Rich Minion versus King's Dead. What a weird matchup. Hey, what the hell? So we got Rich Minion by Yeet from the Minions soundtrack. Oh, I get it. And then we got King's Dead by J-Rock, Kendrick Lamar, and Future, and James Blake. Isn't James Blake on it? James Blake's on there. Yep. From the Black Panther soundtrack. So it's a soundtrack v. soundtrack. Yeah. Battle. I That's like clever. that. That's yeah. clever. I like movies. <laughs> Similar movies, too. Similar films. Really? I haven't seen uh, either. <laughs> He doesn't swerve in a Humvee because the public can't buy him. Unless you buy him at an army surplus auction, which are online and you can buy a surprising amount of military grade vehicles, including tanks. Is that what a Humvee is? Humvee, yeah. I thought it was literally like some type of Hummer. So the Hummer model that we know as people of society yeah. is based off of the Humvee model that was used in Operation Desert Storm, Operation Iraqi Freedom. Oh. Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah. Military grade vehicle. And then the Hummer, popularized by our incessant fetishization of wartime aesthetics. Humvee Dumvee sat on a war. Still a great song. Let's have a conversation. Which song is better to you? I mean, King's Dead's better. You said that like that's an objective fact. Would love to hear a little, like, uh, I'd love to hear you try. I come money. <laughs> I call money. He doesn't fuck with Vector, bro. King's Dead, amazing song. I yep. do think it's better than Rich Minion. I'm not going to sit here and say that it's not. Yeah. But I'm saying try. it's close. Yeah, but you got to take into account like the meme factor for Minions in general, too. But think about this. Earlier, we said that Western Union was a better song than Bohemian Rhapsody. No, I didn't. We said we liked it more. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. I understand people who like Rich Minion more than King's Dead. Sure. I understand people that buy Taylor Swift tickets for $10,000. I don't like them, but they do. It. Yeah. And I understand them. Being an empath. Ouch. See, I was feeling your pain there. Oh. <laughs> that was your sorrow. <gasps> that was your regret and yearning. Oh. That was something else. <laughs> Three, two, one. King's Dead. That's what I put. It is King's Dead. All right. There we go. I kind of thought that our fans were going to always pick the funnier answer, and it's good to see that the better song is winning most of the time. Taste rules all. The clowns can only do so much. So what is the breakdown there, Grant? King's Dead has 68.92%, and Rich Minion has 31.08%. So close to 69%. Like, really close. It's like you're sucking hips. That's like 68.6%. Sucking hips? It's like you both are gnawing on each other's hips. <laughs> you're not quite in the genital zone. I don't think that looks like a 68, though. True. That's true. It is about appearance. That's the whole point of 69. Yeah. A 68 is like getting upside down head from a snowman. Yeah, that'd be fire. Does yeah. he have a carrot cock, too? Or is it just the nose? It just depends on what part of the world you're in. Oh, really? Yeah, it's yeah. a regional thing. So cool to see cultures all kind of celebrate their, their own way. You yeah. know what I mean? My family was so rich growing up, we used a PS5 as the nose. <laughs> yeah. Just jam a oh. PS5 in there and all the poor kids would try and come and steal it. We'd shoot them with BB guns. That seems dystopian. A PS5 shoves in a snowman's face. It yeah. seems really, really dystopian. Yeah. But wait, when were, were PS5s out? Oh, like, yeah. You were, we were really rich. <laughs> you were a rich kid when PS5s were out? No, they weren't out for the general public. Oh, that's it's how like rich we were, you were. Exactly. Yeah, we had I access see. to the future. Status. Yeah. All right, Grant, what's the next matchup? Don't Start Now by Dua Lipa versus Panda by Designer. Man. Whoa, okay, so we get a pop versus rap matchup here. We got Dua Lipa's smash hit, Don't Start Now, mm. versus Panda by Designer, which is one of my favorite rap songs maybe ever. It's a great song. In terms of like pop hit banger yeah. rap songs, I that song just does something to me too. That's like mm -hmm. one step above Mo Bamba for me in terms of yes. like how it fills me with adrenaline. Yeah. Don't show up. Don't come out. Don't start caring about me. No, 
do, do, do. Oh, I wanted the cowbell. That song is one of my favorite pop songs of the last decade. Yeah, it's it's just fucking funky. It's electrifying. I got bribes in Atlanta. She's a Dolina fan. Credit cards in the scams. <laughs> also electrifying. Yeah, in different ways. I'm gonna guess that you like Don't Start Now more than you like Panda. Correct. I think I might like Panda more at this current moment. Yeah. I love both of these songs so much, but I think that Panda does more for me right now only because of my overexposure to Don't Start Now. Fair enough. I know I'm gonna hear that in other places, and if I hear Panda come on, yeah. I'm gonna turn to everybody and be like, you hearing this? Like, yeah. And then I'm gonna like, wanna jump around if they let me. It's kinda like place. when venison's on the menu. Oh yeah, you're like, really? You're like, what the fuck, they got deer meat? Sure, I'll <laughs> give me some. <laughs> yeah, I've never eaten venison, but. Really? No. You ain't no country boy. I never said I was. Well, it's good. It's a leaner alternative to beef. Oh, cool. Not a lot of fat. I think Don't Start Now might have won me over if it did have designer ad libs in it. Oh, that'd be awesome. Don't start caring. Wow. About me now. <laughs> Three, two, one. Panda. That's what I put. Is don't start now. I was, I you know it. what? Yeah, I, I I see that now. See the eraser streaks? I do. I wrote it and I said, Graydon, it's not your game. It's the people's game. And I thought the people would be more pandified. What's the split there, Grant? Don't start now is 52.38% and panda is 47.62%. That's a close one. You know what? Good on our Patreon for coming up with a matchup of two songs that are so different from each other and getting that close and what people think about them. Yeah. Much closer than I expected it to be. Yeah, much like the Clinton-Trump presidential race. Very different people, very close race. Grant, what's the next matchup? Star Shopping by Lil Peep versus R.I.P. by Playboy Cardi. Whoa. Okay. Probably as different as the last two songs. Yeah. Despite being rap songs of the last decade, they are very different from one another in mood, texture, in tone and delivery. Mouthfeel. Look at the sky tonight. All of those stars have a reason. One of my favorite Peep songs. That's a classic. That's it's a like, beautiful one. If there was classic rock for emo rap, that'd be one of the songs. <laughs> You're now listening to 1017 classic emo rap. <laughs> <laughs> Ten years, that'll be the case. Yeah, I'm gonna go fuck that bitch. Yeah, I'm gonna go dash that bitch. Yeah. Shouting gonna suck this dick. Yeah. Shouty gonna suck this dick. Kill. <laughs> Chill, Chill, Cardi. Cardi. Whoa, man. I love both these songs so much. Me I too. will have to say that I like R.I.P. more than Star Shopping, probably. Yeah. Star Shopping's like top 10 peep song to me, but not top five. And R.I.P. is probably in that top five. At least in the top something, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like somewhere near the top of Cardi songs. Yeah. Three, two, one. R.I.P. R.I.P. It is R.I.P. Mm. I'm on your heels, you little bastard. I'm going to catch you. I'm going to overtake you. And, and, and today is going to be my day of valor. What's the breakdown here, Grant? R.I.P. has 59.65% of the votes, and Star Shopping has 40.35% of the votes. Close, but not a nail biter. I wouldn't bite my nails for that one, or be on the edge of my seat, or Sweat. say that it went down to the wire. No. I wouldn't say that for that one. Mm -hmm. I would say that it was a pretty clear-cut victory, and I don't think we need a recount. It was well fought, but it's over. Take a knee. Victory formation. Or if you're Zion Williamson, do a windmill dunk. 360 windmill <laughs> dunk, and flip off the home fans. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even care that was awesome. Yeah, it was badass. I know it started a fight and whatever. Sure. People are saying, like, he said, he's like, it's out of character for me, blah, blah, blah. We need more shit like that in sports. That's exciting. And <laughs> the best part is, is, like, Phoenix eliminated them last year. Yeah. He was injured. He did it for his boys. They're both battling for top spots in the West. Both teams are good. I'm all for it. Especially, like, the New Orleans Pelicans. Yeah, let them they, fly. They got a chip, man. Here's the thing. They don't have a chip. They need to go get one this year. Yeah. What's the next matchup, Grant? Piano Man versus Tiny Dancer. Whoa. Sing it. Us a song, yeah, a piano, piano man. man. So we've got Billy Joel versus Elton John here. I mean, dueling pianos, if you will. <laughs> oh, yeah. I wish we had a local piano bar. My mom wants to open one. <laughs> I bet she does. That's such a stupid idea. You just said you wanted one. <laughs> yeah, I wish I had a local piano bar to go to. And then I said my mom wants to open one. <laughs> I mean, in terms of businesses, it's laughable. In a mystical fantasy world, it sounds great, but like as an actual business venture, read a book, Joanne. So you want one to magically spawn in the city that you can go to, but you think it's a terrible business venture. Oh yeah, I mean, I love and respect your mother. She's not gonna be successful. What's she gonna become, the piano bar lady? She can be successful at whatever she sets her mind to. Not a piano bar. She has shown me that time and time <laughs> not again. Not a piano bar, Riley. A restaurant bar alone. One of the riskiest things you can ever do in your whole life. You also laughed when she said she was gonna be co-owner of the Minnesota Timberwolves and looked <laughs> 
get that now. I overlooked that one, but I didn't have the paperwork and stuff. And I don't need the paperwork to know a piano bar is just dumb. I'm just saying my mom can do anything she sets her mind to. She owns 50% of the Minnesota Timberwolves. Everybody laughed at her. <laughs> yeah. Even howled in jest. They went, oh, you're going to own part of the Timberwolves. Oh, yeah. Like that whole thing. It wasn't cool, man. She <laughs> cried a lot about that stuff. Yeah. And then what did she do? She did that. Shit. She hunkered down, yeah. stacked her cash, made some smart moves, yeah. shook some hands. Tell you what wasn't a smart move. Selling the farm for Rudy Gobert. Doesn't fit with Carl Anthony Towns. Too big. She doesn't have much to do with the front office. She's just an owner. Oh, I mean, okay. she still lives in like at home and stuff. Yeah. She doesn't even really watch the games. Oh. Says, son, can you play me a memory? I'm not really sure. Making love to his tonic and gin. I love when he says that. So he watched a guy fuck a mixed drink and that's what you like about the song? <laughs> Metaphorically, raw dog in that mixed drink. And he says gin and tonic backwards, which is just an interesting songwriter's choice. On the close of tonic great songs. This may surprise people because I am a big uh, BJ head. Yeah. Big on Billy Joel. I much prefer Tiny Dancer to Piano Man. Yeah, Elton's voice just kind of carries the weight here. Songwriting of Piano Man's great, but it's almost like closing time or something. It's become something else than a song. Yeah, it's like a kitschy karaoke song sort yeah. of thing. Elton John, this is a fun musical fact, historical fact. Sure. Was on cocaine when he wrote Tiny Dancer. I mean, that's probably true of like any song he wrote in the 80s. It's just a fun historical tidbit. Oh, we go, side, tiny dancer. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, ready? Three, two, one. Piano man, tiny dancer. It is tiny dancer. Really? All tied up, boss. <laughs> <laughs> I really thought Piano Man was just such a more recognizable song that it was going to get most of the votes. These folks see through that corny shit. Oh, my bad. I didn't know that. And they know how to appreciate music, real fucking music. And now, with the knowledge I've just supplied them, they know that Elton John was on cocaine when he wrote that sucker. You think Billy Joel was free basin when he wrote Piano Man? Probably. No, but he did ah. try heroin one time. And then he said that it was the most creative he ever felt. And he got so scared of how much he liked it that he never touched it again. That doesn't make any sense. You know, all the stuff they say about heroin, all that yeah, stuff. That, that happened, happened to Billy Joel one time. <laughs> and then he was like, oh God, I like this way too much. If I ever touch this again, I'll go down that path. What, the creative path of like probably writing the best music of his life? Yeah, that's we would have gotten some really good albums. I'll tell yeah, you that. that's <laughs> what I'm saying. Come on. But Billy. he's alive right that's now. That's true. So rock on, Billy Joel. What's the split here? Tiny Dancer is 50.91% and Piano Man had 49.09%. Bite, close. bite these guys. Bite them. No, bite them, bite them, bite them, bite them. It's a nail biter. Them. Bite them. Bite them. Bite Stop them. It. Bite my nails. Ooh. I love being on here with you, man, joking around and stuff. Why are you doing this also? Dignan did this a bunch in the last video. Just trying to verbalize gratitude. Because I never know when it's going to be my last day. I don't want people to think I'm just an asshole. I really want you to know that I like, I like being here with you and joking around and stuff. <laughs> Where's the punchline? Come on, bring it on. <laughs> I love you, man. <laughs> Here it comes, guys. Here it comes. I really do. <laughs> and then the, yeah, the joke. The... I know shit gets hard a lot of times, but, like, means a lot to me. Are you going to, like, try to eat your hand or do a funny dance or maybe, like, pinch your nipples a little bit or something? Is it going to be a physical bit? Is it going to be... Oh, okay. He's really committing to this one. I feel like it's, it's, it's leading somewhere. There's going to be something that we all laugh at. It's okay. Funny voice, accent. It's okay, man. It's okay just to be here with me in this moment. Are you going to like pretend to wield a weapon or something like rah, 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 like something like that? It'd be I'll, funny. I'll get back to that stuff when I feel it's right. But for now, I just want to express my gratitude. Oh, I get it. Okay. It's an impression of like a, like a serious guy in a rom-com or something. I love watching movies too. It's one of my biggest passions. Oh, it's a coming of age film guy? Is it? Oh, it's Steve Carell as a dad to Timothy Chalamet in that one movie? You know, he really knocked that performance out of the park. I really can't break this. I do not know where the joke is going. And I, actually, that's kind of the fun of it. It's like trying to figure that out. Unclench your jaw. Just unclench it. Let your tongue hang. Take a deep breath. <sighs> that's good. <laughs> that's better, buddy. Put that sucker back in there. And <laughs> so let's get on with this video. And joke. Funny part. Yeah, yeah man. All right. DJ Grant, what is the next one? Looking at Zonic versus Digits. Ooh. Oh, this is such a good matchup. Yeah. Not the most popular song by either artist, but both personal favorites of mine. Yeah. We got Looking Exotic by Future off of Hendrix, mm -hmm. and we got Digits by Young Thug off of Slime Season 3. Yeah. Up a couple bands, girl, I hit it good. Then looking like the baddest bitch in my video. White Phantom, White Phantom on a white rose. <laughs> 
That song is so underrated. I can't believe it wasn't a smash hit. I yeah. think I've said that on camera before, but like, oh my God, that song is yeah. crazy. That's transcendent stuff. That's different. Like I love looking exotic, but Digits is a better song. Yeah, to it's me. a chill up the spine, kind of open your top chakra moment for Young Thug. It's like that and with them yep. off of the same project are so crazy. Yeah. And Memo, which doesn't get a lot yes, of love too. I love Memo. Memo's crazy. Free Thug. Free Gunna. Free YSL. Three, two, one. Digits. That's what I put. It is Digits. Yes. Right. It's a little more of a powerhouse. Looking exotic's great, but it still very much lives in that deep cut kind of space. Yeah. If you know about Digits, you know how great of a song that is. You don't have to convince anyone. That's a wonderful song. Very specific example, but if we posted a Young Thug bracket and it was like the premiere was up, the chat would be full of people being like, Digits better win. Yeah. There would be other songs too, but mm -hmm. like that is one of the most beloved Young Thug songs. People consider it one of yeah. the best. Futures is different. What's a the breakdown there, G? Digits had 58.54% of the votes. Logan Exotic had 41.46% of the votes. That seems right. That's closer than I thought. What's that next matchup, G, baby? Dance with the Devil by Immortal Technique and Happy by Pharrell. We get to listen to Dance with the Devil twice on this channel in the same year. Oh, God. <laughs> this is like Insidious versus The Little Mermaid. I mean, this is like Harry Potter versus Voldemort. Or sorry, Happy Potter versus Voldemort. Then again, there's always the wicked that no one advance. Dance forever with the devil on a cold cell block. Dark, dark, dark storytelling there. I used to listen to that five times a day in my crawl space. I remember with that era. Yeah, it was like 20... 19? It was yeah. early 2020? Yeah. I think. It was, yeah, oh yeah, it was pre-pandemic. But yeah, I did that for a good six to eight months, yeah. yeah. I'm alone if you feel like a room without a roof. Cause I'm happy. I did clap along. Oh, uh, I saw that. Cause I do feel like a room without a roof. I feel like most rooms don't have roofs. They have ceilings. And <laughs> my right people. Detroit, how are you feeling? <laughs> Which song do you like better? I probably like Happy more. Yeah, I think I for a second I thought about saying that I like Dance with the Devil more, but like in terms of just listening to the song, yeah, I'd rather listen to Happy. And I don't even love that song. I think it's kind of no. annoying. Yeah, but. it is kind of annoying. But like musically, it's got more things going on. Mm -hmm. Dance with the Devil's like I like the eerie piano and I like the commitment to the dark concept, and it is a cool narrative. Like it's fine. It's not a cool narrative. Well, it's like you know watching a terrible horror movie where everyone dies. Like they committed to that. Don't shit. spoil it. What? I said just a horror movie. <laughs> but I haven't seen any of them oh yet. Oh my god, you are. You are a severely oh damaged god. individual who needs to seek help. Oh, guess what? The next sports game, someone's gonna win. Dude! <laughs> oh. I taped him on TiVo, a bunch of them. You don't tape on TiVo. It records it for you on its own little TiVo box. Sorry, I use a few antiquated terms that you can just kind of convert to digital. Okay, I tape stuff on TiVo. I know it's not committed to tape, but I'm saying that it's like the act of tape. Taping it. It's like, oh, did you tape the game? It's easier for me to just say that because I said it before to my dear wife, Cheryl. I said it to her before, and so I, why would I change up my lingo? It's been, I mean, we've been together for 30 years. I mean, we're not just going to all of a sudden become new people. It's like I still call TikTok Instagram video one. I just call the internet the Facebook. <laughs> Three, two, one. Dance with the devil. Happy. It is dance with the devil. Dang it. I knew that was the one they were going to pull through for. Dang they it. had to. There's a clear, funnier answer here. Why has it got to be funny? funny funny why can't it just be why don't they, they like that song more or is the joke coming or is it <laughs> whoop, whoop. grant what's the breakdown let it fly <laughs> and punchline no? Okay. Into the Devil has 56% and Happy has 44%. Not bad. That is, uh, that's awesome. I'm yeah. glad that you guys are consuming media like that. We heard Dance with the Devil. We heard Tiny Dancer. We heard... Tiny Dance with the Devil. <laughs> What's the next one, DJ Grant? Untitled 07 by Kendrick and Pyramids by Frank Ocean. Weird one. Yeah. Very weird one. I love 07 though. I mean, 07 is fantastic, but wow. Chains will get you out of this. Juice will get you out of this. Levitate, 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 levitate. Wow. That was one of those that I was like, this could have made the album. Yeah, absolutely. The next album. Produced a little bit more thoroughly, like really mm -hmm. like give it the bells and whistles. I think it becomes a hit off of Damn. Yeah. 
Working at the pyramids and pimping in my convo. Not a lot of people know this. That song's about Frank Ocean's brief stint working at the Bass Pro Shop Pyramid in Las Vegas. Really? Yes. It doesn't even sound like he's talking about himself working. He says she's working at the pyramids tonight. Yeah, it's a it's an artistic kind oh, of take. About a, is it about a coworker? About yeah. a workplace romance? Could be. He was the angler. They have a fishing kind of expo that goes on there. Yeah. Yeah. He's showing people how to use spinner baits and how different varieties of bass bite them and how to land them correctly. I thought you were saying he was an angler fish at the Bass no, Pro Shop no, Pyramid. No. I didn't, yeah. Okay. That'd be silly. I mean, they, yeah, they yeah. live like way deep down in the trenches. Yeah. Like they could never survive on a pyramid, let alone in Las Vegas with yeah. all the gambling. No, that has to do with it, but. I mean, it just, you know, they're used to pressure, but not the pressure of the roulette table. No pressure when you get two eights and blackjack. What do you do, Riley? Rip up your cards and smoke <laughs> a cigarette. <laughs> split them. Oh. Double bad. your odds. Sorry about that. Always split eights, kids. If you haven't played blackjack and you're a young kid and you're thinking about getting into gambling, if you get dealt two eights at the table. Split them. Three, two, one. Pyramids. That's what I put. It is pyramids. Seems like a clear winner. That was the one that I knew it had to be pyramids. Yeah, I mean, it seems like an interesting question, but let's hear the breakdown, and I think it was a clear pyramids victory. Pyramids is 72.55%, yeah. and Untitled 07 is 27.45%. I mean, you're going to have diehard Kendrick fans that aren't going to ever let any Frank Ocean song beat it, yeah. but you're going to have real people out there voting for pyramids. It's just a better song. I think even if you deviate from talking about song versus song, just listening to them. It's like release versus release. Yeah. Pyramids is like a classic song people have experiences and memories with. Now I have an eight, so I'm supposed to split that? Two eights. If I had eights, we'd split it. A 16. So if I get 16, I'm gonna wanna split it into eights. Yeah. So I'd be like a third player to my left or your right, whatever. The A would have eight and I would have eight. And that'll double your odds because then if you hit, which you will on the next two, right. you're gonna get two cards instead of just one. So Ooh. you're doubling your chances. You do have to bet more. You're maximizing your exposure, but you're increasing your chances of winning a pot that usually isn't out there, you know? I wish I had a chili dog right now. Oh yeah, so yeah, the exposure, maximizing yeah. the exposure thing. <laughs> yeah. Grant, what's the next matchup? Fireflies by Owl City versus Midnight City by M83. Whoa. I love both these songs. Very different songs, but yeah. I understand the connection with the cities. City, yeah. And then also like big synths and stuff. Yeah, they do have some sonic similarities. Cause I get a thousand hugs from 10,000 lightning bugs. Doesn't get enough credit for being so syncopated. <laughs> that kind of tickles. 10 lightning bugs per hug. Okay. I get a thousand hugs from 10,000 lightning bugs. Got it. Nice. I don't know. Just, just quickly running through the math for you. That's 10 bugs a hug. Got it. A lot of people maybe didn't know that song based on the name of it and then heard that and was like, oh, commercials. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's a great song though. That was like legitimately a party song when it was out. Like you that, hear it everywhere. That record was fire. Oh, it's great. M83 yeah. is awesome. But yeah. personally, I prefer Fireflies by Owl City because it's kind of on my maybe top 10 list of all time for songs. I used to put M80s inside of Fireflies and then put them inside of Ducks. How did an M80 fit inside of a Firefly? Well, I'd I guess I'd wrap the M80 in Fireflies so it was inside of Fireflies. Fireflies. Dignan brought an M80 to Firefly Music Festival in Delaware. Oh, really? Yeah. That's cool. He likes fireworks. Oh, yeah. I mean, his KDR is insane. Yeah. You know what I was thinking about the other day? What's up? Nick Cannon's really the only person I know that is truly going baby on baby. Oh, no, exactly. Exactly. Three, two, one. Fireflies. Yes. It is Fireflies. I, I knew it had to be. I mean, come on. Handedly. 66.32%. Huh? Midnight City is 33.68%. Good for M83. Almost exactly two thirds of the vote went to Fireflies, meaning that they got about double the amount of votes that M83 did. I never really understood the whole two thirds, one third thing. Yeah, totally. But I guess the way you just put it to me, made sense. DJ Grant, what is the next matchup? Gucci Gang versus Betrayed. Oh my yes. gosh, another Clash of the Titans. We've got Gucci Gang by Lil Pump versus Betrayed by Lil Xan. These are kind of the classic rock songs of the SoundCloud rap era. This is Lakers versus Celtics. Yankees versus Sox. But if all of those teams only had one good season. Yeah. But it was like outrageously good. Undefeated. Yeah, an undefeated season in baseball. Yeah. <laughs> 160 games. Sprint and rest on new chain. Yeah. My big love dude. Cocaine, ooh, I 
a bitch, I forgot her name. Yeah. Good song. I mean, it is legitimately a good song. Yeah. It's just, it will never escape its context. That's the thing. It's just its context is its life. Zans gon' make you, Zans gon' take you, Zans gon' fake. I mean, a beautiful kind of warning tale of what drug abuse can do to you. Cautionary tale, yeah. Cautionary tale. That's yeah. the word I was looking for. Cautionary tale, yeah. Cautionary tale, Cautionary yeah. tale. Uh -huh. Cautionary tale, yeah. Cautionary tale, yeah. yeah. It's like having a traffic cone attached to your ass. That's a cautionary tale. Totally. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, that song is, it's pretty good. I think Lil Xan has other good songs too, actually. Yeah, for sure. But then he has like so many bad songs. Like it's like, yeah. it's like three needles in a haystack. You know what I mean? I mean, same can be said about Pumpington. That's true. I do enjoy Gucci Gang more than Betrayed. I don't know. I can't really detach either of these from their context. Like if I was just listening to music by myself and I had to listen to one of these two, I'd listen to Betrayed. But if Gucci Gang plays somewhere, I'm kind of like hype on it because it same. feels like I'm like on a trip on memory lane with mm -hmm. my boys. Yes. Like I look at my guys and I'm like, you guys remember this whole era, right? Mm -hmm. Three, two, one. Betrayed. That's what I put. It is Gucci Gang. <gasps> I thought they were going for the joke with this one. Our channel has such a culture around Lil Zane. That's what I thought too. I leaned heavily on that. Okay, what's the split there? Gucci Gang has 66.13% and Betrayed is 33.87%. Beat the socks right off Lil Zane, jumped them in public. <laughs> Another two thirds versus one thirds matchup there. That's how it broke down. That's Understood. what the stats are saying well, and what the numbers are speaking to us. I don't understand it, but yeah. This is the last matchup for this episode. If you'd like to participate in these, join our Discord. And if you would like to suggest song matchups, join our Patreon. Grant asks for the matchup ideas to the Patreon members. But everybody gets to vote. So join the Discord and we'll send out the next one when we're about to film and you guys get to all vote and see if the songs you voted for win. Grant, what's a fitting final matchup for this great game? No Role Models versus Laugh Now, Cry Later. Okay. No Role Models by J. Cole, Laugh mm -hmm. Now, Cry Later, Drake and Lil Durk. Mm -hmm. Both with horns in them. Yes. That connects these, these two songs. It does. <laughs> also, big hit rap songs all over the radio at their respective times. Absolute monster jams. One time for my L.A. sisters. One time for my L.A. hoes. That is a banger, man. It's such a good song. Even if you're like a J. Cole doubter, which I don't consider myself a full J. Cole doubter. I'm just not as into him as other people. Yeah. That song and that album it's are awesome. fantastic. Yeah. I miss like who I was and where I was when I was listening to that album a lot. 2014, Forest Hills Drive. Please don't pay that nigga's songs in this party. I can't even listen to it. Shorty, come sit, sit on, on my lap. Hey, that song is so good. I mean, Drake's performance on it, like if you listen, every single bar is clever and cutting because it is a Kanye diss song Yeah, it's awesome. at its core. Anytime I run into somebody, it must be a victory lap is crazy. Yeah, it's a perfect song. Think mm -hmm. Drake to the hood. It's around Drake, around Drake's. <laughs> I mean, nowadays I feel like I'd rather listen to Laugh Now, Cry Later, but do I think it's a better song than No Role I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. It's tough. One's like a little fresher, but No Role Models is really like, I'm never going to not enjoy that song. It's a classic rap song. And it has stood a little more of a test of time just being older. So yeah, I don't know. It's tough. I think like truthfully at my core, I think it would be cooler and classier to say I like No Role Models more, but like I like Laugh Now, Cry Later more. I'm afraid I'm with you. Yeah. But it's a about them. Yeah, so let's see what they said. Mm -hmm. you ready, pal? It's been a fun game. I can't wait for episode two. It has. Three, two, one. No role models. That's what I put. It is no role models by oh, Jake Cole. Yes. Yeah. It's nice to end on a little, you know. And it turns out we know our fans pretty well. 10 to nine out of yeah. 15 total. That's good stuff. That's pretty good. That's two thirds. So what was the breakdown there, Grant? No Role Models, 81.42%, and Laugh Now, Cry Later is 18.58%. Laugh Now, Cry Later, just like, it's not a cool Drake song to like. No. You know, no it, one's like, oh, that's my favorite. It's like, shut up. It's overplayed. It was all yeah. over the radio. I don't know. I mean, yeah, I understand that voting yeah. margin, and I think they're very close in quality for me. I like both those songs a lot. But mm -hmm. hey, 10 to 9, final score. Thank you guys for participating in this new game. I hope you guys like it. We're going to definitely run it again. So mm -hmm. again, join our Patreon and Discord if you want to get involved. Other than that, make sure you like the video, subscribe, all the stuff I said at the beginning. And great, would you like to leave these wonderful people some advice to leave or live their lives by? The thermometer of success is really just the jealousy of the malcontent. And uh, don't add on to my, this is, that's my part. I do this. I do this. You, you could get mercury poisoning from it, too. Stop. The thermometer Stop. of life, or what is it? The thermometer of what? Success. Success. <laughs> the thermometer of success Stop. could give you mercury poisoning. This has been High Mind TV. We love you, appreciate you, and we will see you in the next one. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh,
I love when you tell me old stories from the past. That is amazing. You had to kill four people because you thought they were stealing from a K Jewelers. It's quite traumatic. It was, uh, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't really spelled. I, I guess I, I did tell it in a lighthearted fashion, but it definitely wasn't like a funny story. <laughs> so I guess it's true what they say. Every kiss begins with K, even the kiss of death. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and every kiss begins with K for me. The K there is for ketamine. I have to dissociate to be comfortable with intimacy. <laughs> Hilarious stuff you've brought to the table today. Thank you. After we get back from the commercial break, we're going to discuss Kelly Ripa's new co-host for her show, Baker Mayfield. Oh! Can't believe it, right? That's going to be pretty cool. America's sweetheart. America's sweetheart, Baker Mayfield. Yep. Loves concepts. <laughs> He loves talking <laughs> concepts. That's one of those things that he does. And headbutting people without a helmet on. Yeah. Hey, he said he was just feeling it. <laughs> and I would be too after that. Great. Come from behind win. 98, 98 yards. yards. Oh my gosh. No timeouts. That's almost the full football field. Yeah. Zero to 60 in 1.5 seconds. Is that what you told me yesterday? I actually ripped the muffler off. It gets me a little more torque. I got it down to 1.3. Really? <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's going to look good at the combine. I mean, what they say. Faster than a Mississippi hickory stick. That's what they say. I know what those are. Yeah. Is that an attempt at a wink? A what? The New England Patreons, if they go down <laughs> bad. It's like a robo horse. No, I was just saying, like, if they go down bad, they might have to start crowdsourcing. Uh, like, if, if yeah. they, you know, they lose funding or something. I don't know. I don't know much about football.